Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a first look at an upcoming game uh, that is called For the People. For the People is described as an acute social novel with strategic elements in which you take control of a newly appointed mayor of a small city. This is basically, it, the country is not called the, U the USSR, but essentially in this game you're a young mayor of an industrial town uh, in what sounds or fe looks like it's going to be a Stalinist state. Um, it's developed by Bresk Studio. It is published by 101 XP. Uh, it is coming out on August 13th on Steam. And uh, it, again, it feels a little bit like We the Revolution, but in a communist kind of a setting. So I'm really curious to see how this game plays. Uh, I have not played much of it. I've, I've done a few things to kind of see how you navigate through a few different screens, but this is very much going to be a, um, a, a first look stream and first look video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this game. There definitely are elements in this game that sort of seem to merge uh, both uh, the Kaiser's Imperial Germany and the Tsar's uh, Imperial Russia. You can see the country that we're leading or that we're going to be in is the Corvin Empire. It's exploited the working people. Uh, that it exploited the working people fell, uh, providing a chance for a better future for the common people all over the world, regardless of gender, skin color, and social status. So this universalist Soviet-type uh, communist revolution. You can see the Corvin Empire is this lit-up section of the map. There are other countries throughout here. It looks like there's some countries down here in what they call the archipelago. There's some other neighboring countries over here. Um, you can see here, we believe that the world would follow us, so that worldwide communist revolution, but our hopes for the world revolution and a bright future were not to come true. So, obviously this is not, we're no longer in the sort of uh, communist revolution in Russia period. Uh, it is the period after when the revolution hasn't materialized and now uh, the Corvin Empire or the Corvin People's Republic or whatever it's called is trying to hold out uh, and uh, spread the word of communism on its own uh, while others do not uh, agree, do not follow. So you can see, we are alone. All these years, the country was wisely guided by our com union working partner, comrade Yosef Steele. Yeah, okay. Yosef Steele. I wonder who that's supposed to be. The general secretary, although wisely guided? Hmm. Um, the general secretary of the CUWP. So the Common Union Working Party is the leading party of the country, and the chairman of the Supreme Council of the Union of Communes has ruled our state for the past 15 years. It was a surprise for all of us when on the anniversary of his election to this post, uh, during the 20th Party Congress, he announced the appointment of Comrade Guy Adair, a young and energetic reformer, as the chairman of the Com Union Executive Committee. Well, it's obviously not Stalin if he's handing some reins of power over to somebody else. I will never forget Comrade Steele's face star staring at me in front <laughs> from the photo in the newspaper. It was like he was looking directly into my soul. We were all seized by the sense of impending change we had to go through, but I could not even guess how quickly I would be dragged into what was happening. Okay, so we've moved into the first person. This is me, I'm assuming, up here. My name is Franz River. I'm 26. I graduated with honors from the Corvington Institute of Management and National Economy, and after that I joined the CUWP. I've been an active member for of its Altstadt department the last three years. The phone suddenly rang on the evening of September 11th. The Central Committee of the CUWP was calling for me. I was told that according to the new course policy, I got into the staff rotation program as a worthy CUWP member and an outstanding alum of the Corvington Institute. Just say Brezhnev and Gorby. <laughs> That's how I found myself in Iron One. Iron One. Very, very uh, Soviet-esque, right? An industrial mining town. Iron One was founded near the Wolfram deposits near the town near uh, during the times of the Corvin Empire in 1888. It was known as Blackmont back then. It was a small miner's town, but our glorious Orange Revolution turned it into the leading industrial city with almost 50,000 citizens. Almost half of them are representative of the Kent people. Others are Cor Corvinian. I was appointed the head of the city committee. I've become the new ruler of this city. I have to move into my new office today. 
So we're a young upstart mayor. Who knows why we've been selected into this position? It's September 12th, so the day after the announcement of the new uh, new party secretary. I can't even remember the ranks. Uh, it looks like Helen is probably my secretary. And then this game is going to give us different options to select uh, through dialogue screens, similar to kind of like games like We the Revolution or Choose Your Adventure type games. So obviously in this scenario, I only have one option to choose, but in other, other statements, I'll have multiple options to choose. And based on how, my, how I select my options, the game will unfold. So you can see here, good morning, Comrade Rosie. Glad to meet you. Comrade River, excuse me for my curiosity. Comrade Lebowski was removed so suddenly that I didn't even understand what was happening, so we're probably getting involved in some sort of political scandal, I would imagine. How did it happen that the city committee is led by such a young leader? I hope it didn't sound rude. <laughs> Everything's all right, Comrade Rosie. My appointment here is part of the party's new course. As General Secretary Steele put it, young leaders uh, for a progressive order and Comrade Lebowski, I don't even know how to pronounce that, has been sent into an honorable retire. Dude's dead. Dead, dead. He's like in Siberia or something. Although our industrial town might be in Siberia as well. Uh, I was removed so suddenly that he didn't have time to solve some issues. You can review the necessary documents I left on your table. Okay. <laughs> so this is not Novosplinsk. Retirement. Exactly, Ridley. Retirement. All right, so we can answer appeals from the city services down here. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and look at this city map here. So there's a map here that gives you different information about the town. You can see there's different districts over here. Miners district. There's uh, the police department here, the taxi station, the fire committee. You can click on some of these buildings. I'm assuming some of these buildings will be things we have to click on at different periods of time. Um, you can click on the library right now to learn a little bit more about uh, our country. You can see over here the attitude to the city committee and the budget. We have a budget of 2 million, uh, 70%, I'm assuming, support us, 30% miners district support, 50% in the Wolf, uh, Wolf Rems district, 70% in Orion's district, and 50% in Bassar's district. That's how I'm reading it anyway. I wonder if the 70% is just representative of the top level of support. If we go into the uh, library here, it actually has a nice little backstory for this, and this isn't all of it either. So you, there's there's a couple of different uh, little blocks that pop up here. So you can see the UPOC, Union of P uh, People's Orange Commune, is the first country in the world that adopted the ideas of communal socialism. The UPOC, so that's our country name, is developed in a, uh, is a developed and progressive country of workers and peasants arisen from the ruins of the old Kaiser's regime of the Corvid Empire, right after the Orange Revolution and subsequent Liberation War uh, people. Uh, inhabiting this destroyed... Uh, prison of nations united in communes. Corvin People's Orange Commune, uh, Kent uh, POC, Kent POC, Japanese POC, Ukbara POC. So these are basically like the different uh, Soviet socialist republics within the USSR, essentially. Um, so the country was founded in 1926. So if it's 15 years after that, I would assume it's like 1941 ish. Um, and you can see here, whatever. So additionally, it gives you a background of the Corvin Empire, which was basically like an imperialist monarchy uh, with some similarities both between Imperial Germany and uh, the Soviet Union, or sorry, the, the Russian Empire, at least that's my reading of it. You've got a counter-revolutionary rebel movement that still exists today and holds out on some parts of the map that presumably will play a role in the story uh, that we'll have to deal with. Uh, you've got Slavia, which is an archipelago, which is a, a bordering country. They were defeated in the anti-Corvin coalition, so there was a big war before this revolution, very similar to World War One. The game even refers to it as the Great War, um, and uh, and so um, you know that war was fought. Interestingly enough, the Corvin Empire won the war, so it was the imperialist war. Twenty-three million people died between 1916 and 1920, um, and the Corvin Empire won the war. But I guess it's so undermined its own standing that despite the victory it led to social unrest and, and an eventual re rebellion there was a coup uh, a, co a conspiracy that was led against the kaiser uh by eisenwald but he was he was killed uh and and the the coup failed uh then there was i guess the black army is the elements of the army that are in exile uh this is a workers party this is another workers party that formed the current communist party uh which is the c w or c u w p um, I mean, there's a lot of information in here. I'm not going to read through all of it. Uh, but essentially, there was a revolution that occurred after after this this great war. 
Um, and uh, there's different information in here. And it gives you information about the buildings as well. So you can see Iron One gives you a background of the city, uh, gives you a background of the hospital, um, of the, the stadium. I'm confused on dates here, though. And I'm wondering if they're mixing up 1926 and 66, because there's a lot of references to 1966, references to 1986, references to 1926. And that feels a little sloppy because it says that Joseph Steele's been in charge for 15 years. If the revolution occurred in 1926, the math doesn't seem to add up there. Uh, so I'm not really sure. The most powerful party is the ICUP. I think the ICUP is the only, or the UC. What is it? I didn't even see. The ICUP, that's like the Imperial Council or whatever, right? Like not the actual ruling party. Trying to look through here. The CUWP is the Workers' Party. And then the... Um, of the le the ruling party of UPOC. It's the only legal party. Joseph Steele is the general secretary of it. And then the CUEC is like their... I would assume like their Politburo or something like that. It's their highest executive body. But in any event... He got murdered and he doesn't even know. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm obviously doing something wrong. Oh, the phone is ringing. I guess we'll answer the phone. Rivers is on the line. This is Colonel Chester, head of the police. Shall I connect you? Sure, I guess I don't have a choice. I'm the head of the integrity division. <laughs> ICUP. Ha. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, calling to offer my congratulations on your appointment. What a bootlicker. He's calling me day one right away. Okay, John Chester. You don't know how pleased I am, but frankly, some problems are overshadowing my joy, and we should talk them over. Would you mind to meet, uh, let's say, in the evening, the day after tomorrow? Um, I can either decline to say there's too many unsolved problems. You know what? I, I will win the affection of the police. I will agree to meet him on his own schedule. Uh, and there you go. What a nice beginning to our partnership. I'll see you soon, Comrade Rivers. Oh, wait. Another phone is ringing. The party phone. The part... So I, maybe I can ignore the non-party phone, but I have to answer the party phone? It's Frank. Hey, Frank. It's Ryan. So obviously this guy is like a friend of mine, and I didn't expect to hear him calling on the party phone. I'm a major and the head of the political department of this town. This line is secure. That's why I'm using it. Okay... What's the deal with the secure line? Change always brings problems, Frank, and the union is changing rapidly. So we're going to get involved in some, some backroom dealings here, and hopefully we don't lose our head. I'd rather meet tomorrow and discuss it in private. Okay, come early and I'll notify my secretary. She'll let you in without waiting in the queue. Uh, okay, I'll connect you with my secretary. She'll register an appointment. Yeah, I'll let you in you know, through the, through the private door here. You got it right, Frank. See you tomorrow, mate. I don't, I don't know what my relationship is with, is with this guy. Okay, so excuse me for the intrusion. The Secretary of City Committee Comrade Sarah Chester prepared a few dossiers of the important figures of Iron One. They could be useful. Okay, so this will give us a little bit of information. I don't even... Oh. There's no name. Okay, whatever. Just get out of here. Thanks for the stuff. See you tomorrow, Rosie. All right, so here's a dosser that gives me important information. I don't know who Colonel Sylvester Bayer is, but apparently he's someone. He's the head of the fire committee. We've got Carl Backett. Um, he is... It doesn't... You know, the interesting thing is all these dossers tell you about their father, about their mother, about their education, their occupation... Uh, their marital status, their children. Gives you information on all of these things and all their backgrounds. It's a little bit Papers, Please-esque, I think. Um, but it's also like a little bit Stasi-esque in terms of like, oh, okay, so we've got a dosser on everybody. That's a little little whatever. Dossier. All right, so the chief doctor. Um, Colonel John Chester. I think he's the guy who just called us head to the integrity division. What do we know about him? So his father was the director of Klaus Wolfram Metallurgical Plant. His mother was the administration secretary of the Klaus Wolfram 
metallurgical plant, so he married his secretary, or she became his secretary after the fact, one or the other. Um, higher education, Altstadt University, law school, married Sarah Chester, has children, party member since 1969. I don't understand the dates here. No criminal record, awarded the Order of Bravey for saving lives during his duty in 1975. Uh, great executive exemplary family man recommended for political department duty. So apparently this guy's like the model model employee there. Um, who was the guy who called me who was my friend? I don't even remember. It wasn't Chester. It wasn't Kipler. It wasn't Baca. Did, did we get a DOS around that other guy? No, I don't think we see a DOS around the guy we're going to be meeting tomorrow. Commander of the 11th Motorized Regiment. There's also some, like, people in here that are a little bit a little bit dubious in that, like, oh, these people may not be the most, uh, most loyal folks around, so... Uh, mispronouncing, is that what you guys are talking about? Sorry, boys. A closed city? I don't know. All right, so we need to answer the official appeals from the citizens and the city services. So you can see here there's some appeals here. Uh, I'm writing to you not for the first time. Point of my complaint is that there's an annoying, strange noise on the floor above my apartment situated in the Orange Banner Street. Blah, blah, blah. I'm a veteran of the Liberation War and hero of the social labor. I worked at a factory for 50 years. I have an award... <laughs> Awarding medal. In that case, may I pretend a quiet aging comrade? I ask you to... How would they... Oh, this is... That's the former guy. I was like, how would they know who I am? Well, they didn't. That's not who I am. Um, so, this is great. This decision influences relationships with the party and its citizens. So, old man is clearly delirious. I don't need to do something. It's necessary to check out his building. Let's get some municipals there or let the police there... Uh, he wrote to the head of the committee for a reason, didn't he? So I probably don't want to just jump right into like, oh my God, you're a cranky old man and you're you're complaining about these ruffians or loud children or whatever they are. But I think we'll have uh, we'll have a municipal to to check it out. Workers of municipal services did not find vandals or noisemakers in the building. Nothing suspicious came back from Canvas 2. Apparently, the old man imagined it all. Okay. So we used a little bit of our resources there, I imagine. Uh, but we at least looked into it. You're a ma... Oh, you're a masochist? Okay. Uh, that's good to know, Galactic. Uh, wow, this is a long one. Jeez, this is going to be a lot of reading. I'm not going to read it all out loud, but uh, this is Henry Johnson, Colonel of the 17th R uh, Rifle Division, retired, uh, honorary awards, blah, 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 blah. Uh, slacker, slobs, lullabies, all around. All modern louts do nothing but hang out in residential buildings. Um, so there are going to be a lot of just stupid complaints that I have to deal with. In my leisure time, I was working on a plan that would help eliminate these signs of moral degradation, and I came to the conclusion that we need to establish a whole system of patriotic institutions for all ages. Discipline and socially beneficial labor are exactly what the future workers need. I promise to start with an exemplary camp for 100 to 200 youngsters aged 12 to 16. I will personally... Oh. Uh, these men should, uh, this man should not be allowed anywhere near children. Huh, that's not a bad idea. Uh, better to march than to break windows out of boredom. It would cost 5,000 credits. Um, hmm. Do we want to do some sort of youth labor thing, or do we want to let the kids do whatever they want to do, and this guy is just annoying, and maybe we shouldn't even trust him around kids? Is that man Tortuga power? I don't know, Charcoal. You tell me. Uh, denied. I'm not going to send you around children. You do not approve Johnson's idea. It seems he has to find another way to entertain himself. He wants to entertain himself? Jeez. Uh, my heart aches. Even though I'm only 55, it does not ache because of disease. Oh, I would be relieved if it did. My heart goes out for all the UPOC. The sensitive organ of mine is bleeding every single time I see something indecent and unworthy of the glorious land of the communes. Jeez, are these just a bunch of... 
Ugh. Um, not everyone deserves to be the captain. Not everyone understands the essence of sacrificial heroism. What? What is this? Is this a home sweet? What is this? Simply put, Comrade River, my building superintendent is a building super, super governor. A building super kaiser. A building super tyrant. Just imagine he takes my poems off the nearby bulletin board saying that it... Okay. Uh, so this this is so beautiful. I have never read a better poem in my life. What does he want? I will get it right on it. Or, it seems that Bitter's superintendent might know a thing or two about poetry. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about Damien Bitter himself. Denied. So, I need to do something with your poetry. I should really read this all, but I am live streaming right now, and that may not be the most entertaining thing. So we'll just, you know what, whatever, poetry, let's do it. You got a sentimental, you got sentimental and approved the poet's idea. The region was perplexed by your initiative, but they promised to consider the request. The superintendent of Bitter's building lost his job. Uh-oh, did we just make an enemy by getting that superintendent fired? Uh-oh. Day's over, you may leave. Okay, one other thing before we leave here. So obviously this is our office. This is, we already showed the map of the city. We looked at the dossers. We looked at the decisions. We took some phone calls. We also have something up here that's called the country map, and you can learn a little bit more about the history. I'm not going to go through all of it here, but it's kind of detailed here. It gives you like a 1916 date, and you can go up here and you click on the on the eye, and it talks about the Great War, and it talks about you know how the war unfolded and how the Corvin Empire uh, was uh, was surprised, and more and more countries joined the war, and more and more countries turned on the the Corvin Empire. And if we we close out the description of what's happening here and these different parts of the conflict. You can see here that, you know, it's showing where the units are fighting. The the orange countries are obviously, the or the dark orange countries are our enemies. I think also the red ones as well. Um, and you can see what countries those are if you if you read through the, if you read through the storyline. And then kind of as things go on, you can see as, as things unfold where the fronts move. 1920, they win the victory. So blah, 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 happiness. But then you end up having, you know, the, the Eisenwald coup. Uh, where um, you know the the there's this attempt to overthrow the monarchists uh, with a military dictatorship. Then there's the Corvington uprising, where I think some guy like blows himself up and kills kills the Kaiser or something like that. Um, and and then kind of talks about the revolution and gives you all this all this other detail here. So um, for the people, change the name. Did I not change the name to for the people? Is it still? I thought I did. Oh, ha ha ha! Sorry about that. I changed it to "We the People." Nice. All right. Um. Thanks for that, Newhauser. All right. So you can see here. Obviously, then there's sort of the revolution. You can see the Corvington Empire has been split up into multiple uh, uh, multiple packs, and sort of the civil war that occurs uh, with the Orange Revolution gradually taking over control of the country and then you've got holy crap a bunch of stories uh, into the future of of the of the kingdom and and you know as the as the world unfolds i'm curious if this is our whole world or if there's more uh to it because right now it does it does seem a little bit a little bit sparse it does seem to go into the 60s so i don't understand the 15 year thing for for um yosef steel that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense um but in any event, you can see the death of Smith, Yosef Steele. What does it say about Yosef Steele? I'm curious about that. We did not know. What, maybe he wasn't the first general secretary. Maybe I misunderstood that then. Um, the people's militia continued to guard the borders. Political department in, ensured internal order. The people who were exhausted with the great reform reformations and projects of the millennium seemed to be happy uh, and quiet at, at last. Changes were not immediately noticeable, and unfortunately, they were the changes. They were changes for the worst. Nothing seemed to have happened, but the average worker could afford less and less. The customs raising salaries for big anniversaries was gone. Okay. By the early '80s, it became clear the country was in deep crisis, but you probably didn't realize it then. The world situation was not favorable for the resolution of the crisis. On the contrary, the world had changed. It only exacerbated the lag. So this is more of like Yosef Steel sounds a little bit more like. Maybe he's Brezhnev. Maybe it's late, late area era Soviet, uh, Soviet time frame. And then Dare is this reformer who comes in. 
uh, and is uh, is leading the reforms to, to try and get us back on our feet, presumably. So maybe this is like late Soviet Union. I think if you refresh Neuhauser, it should update. It's it's updated on my stream info. So yeah, maybe Dare is Gorbachev. Or not Gorbachev? I don't know. All right. In any event, let's go ahead and exit. So you can see September 12th results. We spent no money. We gained no support. Plus zero. That wasn't a bad day. Nothing changed. So that's okay, right? By the way, R Mags 96 thanks for the follow. Okay, so it's now September 13th. Latest edition of the Iron Herald. It's our city's paper. Good morning. Put it on the table. Okay. What's the paper say? The city committee works for the good of working people. On September 12th, 1988, the Iron City, Iron One City Committee uh, was headed by Comrade Francis River. On the same day, the new head of the city began to serve by the sweat of his brow. We became aware that on his first working day, Comrade River began to study the history of our city, approve the draft of the new guide for the tourists arriving to Iron One for recreation in the unique Orange Resort, and also came to grips with other citizens' problems. Okay. The new head of the city committee on September 11th, the 20th Congress of the Com Union Working Party, Comrade Joseph Steele, the chairman of the Supreme Council Union of Communes, announced the beginning of a new course policy intended to bring our great union to prosperity. Within the framework of the actively le or within the framework of the activity led by the CUWP, significant personnel changes have to happen, which will also affect our wonderful city. The blah 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 blah. This is probably important. Comrade Lebuski will be replaced by young and energetic Comrade Francis River, who is a member of the CUWP and an activist of the Orange Youth uh, Union. He graduated from the facility of the National Economy and Municipal Administration of Com Union University. Uh, the party leadership noted River's merits and entrusted him with control of the city committee. On this post, Comrade River will continue his dedicated service to the union. A lot of fluff in there. Health insurance is a gift for the workers. The late, last and most important achievement of the retired head of the city, com Comrade uh, Comrade Lebowski, is the introduction of the new health insurance package for the workers of the Klaus Wolfram Metallurgical Plant. Comrade Jack Chester, the director of the plant, talks about the advances of this innovation in the interview published on page 14. Okay. Newspaper reading simulator. Check it out. All right, we got a phone call coming in. What's going on? Comrade River, the man you asked to let in with an appointment, is here. Okay, let him in. Uh, okay. Rayon Cooper. Good morning. Hey, Ray, take a seat. Would you like a cigarette, perhaps? Thanks. I wouldn't say no. It's been ages. I'm so glad to see you, my friend. Haven't you and Natalie gotten married yet? We separated a year ago. The ring is still in the box. Ouch! Lucky for you, a fate turned so that you could consult, or so your consolation is waiting for you right behind the door. What? Hold on, Ray. Comrade Rosie is a conscientious employee. Okay, so this guy's a sleaze bag. Got it. Maybe I need such an employee in the polit political department more than you. Shame on you for such a pre revolutionary attitude towards women. I'll report you to the political department, then you'll know. <laughs> Read it with pleasure. Uh, I thought you wanted to talk about work. Yes, the situation's complicated here. The police constantly report about unrest among the workers. A protest is growing. It seems to me that not every not ugh, seems to me not only about civil participation. There is some darker purpose. It is for you to manage it all. Everything is out of my hands. That's right. I could help you with information through my channels. Just call me and ask. It's a small town, so I have no superiors. No one will know about our cooperation. That will help our good cause of serving the people and the party. Yeah, but what if you're giving me bad intel to serve your own uh, ambition? You already seem like kind of a piece of crap. Um, sounds reasonable. Just write your personal number in the notebook, and I wouldn't want to use the office phone or the official phone. Ray, your person, your proposal is tempting, but I have to turn it down. I wouldn't want something like that to come up later and ruin your or my life. I'll somehow deal with it myself. Okay. Um... I don't know, man. I kind of want to, like, take him up on his thing. I guess we'll do that. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't ruin my life. If 
afraid someone could be listening, Frank? And who do you think keeps track of the telephone conversations in this city? <laughs> well, I just probably did a bad thing. Already getting involved in espionage in the town. All right, so we read the paper, uh, the dossier. I don't think that changes unless we got something on Ray here. I want to know more about Ray. Like, apparently we have some kind of history. Give me the info. It's not in the dossier. Um, any updates today? Oh, we do have some decisions to make. This is the first experimental elections. The municipal self-government bodies are to be held as part of the party implementation of Comrade Joseph Steele's new course. The success or failure of this event will determine the elections on other levels as well. Of course, only approved candidates should be allowed to participate. There should be no, uh, there should not be any dissidents, any people with tainted bloodlines. Oh boy, um, we don't need any blackguard descendants in power. However, it should be noted that it is a strictly recommended recommended not to appoint any party officials or prominent social activists as alternative candidates. So we shouldn't pick any party members, and we shouldn't pick any opposition members, and we shouldn't pick any dissidents. Okay. Um, encourage you to arrange a search selection and training of the citizens. So the party says you have to, you have to. So Frank responds with yes. I don't like this idea and do not want to be one of the people who supported it just in case. So we therefore encourage you to arrange a search selection and training of the citizens who meet our requirements, their tasks to become candidates, actively run their campaigns and lose with honor in case of failure. Open disrespect uh, to the authorities and throwing a match are equally unacceptable. This task can be carried out by ourselves, but as the head of the city, you are much more informed and have ample room for maneuver. You have more than enough time. So I can be responsible for the search for the candidates, but that could also put my finger on the problems if they arise. On the flip side, if I just want to cover my own ass, I can do nothing, and I don't want anything on paper supporting me, but we'll, we'll do it. I am going to take responsibility for actions in the city. So you can see here you have started preparations for the elections. Now the insidious black guard does not have the slightest chance to get a position of leadership because I'm doing it, I guess. You can also see that our popularity went up by 10% to 80% and our budget went down from 2 million to 1.995 million. We've got quite a few things to read through here. I'm not sure this makes for the best game to go on stream. It is a very interesting game, but there's a lot of text to wade through. Um... Call the girl differently. Crino, thanks for the follow. Um, what's done cannot be undone. She didn't come back from a walk. Then you got worried. My wife was crying, refusing to believe it. I would refuse to believe it too, but I couldn't. There was a train crash. They said, well, find your daughter. Don't worry. They told us there were no kids at the scene. They even uh, believed it themselves at first. My wife believed this too. Then they found Susie, my little girl, was thrown into some pit that was filled with garbage. What? Why was she at the railroad? I was about to take a shotgun and end everything. At first, I wanted to shoot myself. Then I wanted to shoot somebody from your gang. I think you could be the one, Frank. I think you could be the one, Frank. What makes you worse than, let's say, friends be? What makes you better than my Susie? I'm sorry. What? How am I responsible for any of this? Everyone who's lost a loved one deserves some kind of compensation. We'll start with Herzog, but he won't be the only one. Money will not bring back this poor man's daughter, but it will help his family to get through their grief. I'm terribly sorry. I really am. I don't think I can do anything. Um, I mean, I can't just give everybody money who's lost anyone. I guess I didn't... Uh, maybe they killed her? I don't know who they is. I'm guessing maybe the former party officials. <sighs> it feels like I'm, I'm setting a really bad precedent if I start giving money to people. I'm going to be overwhelmed with petitions for cash. On the flip side, if I do nothing, I'm going to be viewed as out of touch with uh, with the people, and I may lose their support there. So I'll give him money, but I won't order uh, additional families to be able to get money. 
Okay, this looks like it's repeated again from the previous person. This is the same thing as the previous person. That's weird. Anthony Sauer, I'm the director of the orphanage, blah, blah, blah. What do you want? Gangs of orphans are the last thing I want to see in the streets of my city. The integrity division has to inspect the situation thoroughly. Put your backs into it. This story's hard to swallow. Well, better safe than sorry. Well, send the police to check the orphanage and organize patrols in the area. It seems Comrade Sauer writes a detective novel and accidentally sent me one of the chapters. So something's going on with the orphans. We can either send the integrity division to inspect the situation. We can send the police uh, to uh, check the orphanage and organize patrols in the area. The police chief guy seemed to be kind of an upstanding individual, so I'm going to go ahead and go with him and have him do the work. I didn't pay much attention to Sauer's letter, though one can never be too careful. The police found nothing suspicious, but the patrols have positively affected the orphanage's behavior. Okay. So the head of the Iron One Railway Junction. Needless to say, what we do, blah, blah, blah. Again, I should read through all of this, but live stream, that's tricky to do. <laughs> this insolent fellow thinks his campfire stories will make him more money. So the railways are in bad shape. We need new railway ties to replace the rotten ones. We need rails as well, even though they don't rot. But have you heard anything about metal fatigue? So the infrastructure's in bad shape. I'm not going to take any chances. It could be corruption. He might be taking advantage of us. But we took care of the overhaul of the railway. It seems like Fernsby is starting to consider me a friend. Yeah, hopefully he's not using me to, to get cash. All right, so we've got someone else coming in to check things out. All right, so it's our secretary. She's bringing me some tea by the looks of it. It's 5 p.m. already. I got you some tea. Thank you. All this officialness makes me cringe a little. I feel older than I really am. Yes, it's hard for me to get used to it, too. I've never held such a prominent position. I supervise the youth branch of the party in Altstadt, and I'm suddenly the head of the city committee. Actually, I've been working here for just weeks. I had my graduation in June, and here I am. Huh. What was your thesis about? Covering our important events in foreign press. Interesting. So she's probably, like, exposed to the foreign press and is sympathetic to the democracies and capitalist countries out there? The intensification of the conflict with the Corvin government in exile. Did you call the reactionaries the government in exile right in this thesis, and they let that slide? They grumbled a little bit, but they liked the contents, huh? So there's more to you than meets the eye. It's been four years since my thesis defense, but I remember it so well it was as if it was yesterday. I wrote about anti-crisis measures. Comrade River makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> it just occurred to me. Sure, call me Francis. Okay. All right, Francis, I won't distract you from your work. Thank you for the tea, right when I needed it. Just knock. Okay. Who's coming in now? She just left! You received a message from the party. It's not quite an official message. That's something new. Sometimes the city committee is assigned something that cannot simply be done by the book. Lebowski had a friend for such occasions, a secretary named Andrea... Brazelish. This man was not the most likable of my colleagues. Nevertheless, he was well versed in informal assignments. Is he a fixer? Do we have a fixer with us? Sounds ominous. I see. Well, that's not what I expected, but it looks like I don't get to choose. So we'll use her friends. What if she's an agent of of the anti uh, the the government in exile? Okay. The 
party sent a mission for the agents. So if we go in here, we'll see the mission's goal. Garbage truck. We found out that the orange garbage truck appears on the streets of Iron One. We believe it unnecessary to explain why the sacrilegious association of the color of the revolution uh, with waste is completely unacceptable. The trucks will be repainted and the person responsible will be punished accordingly. That's fucked up. How dare you paint this garbage truck the color of the revolution? All right. Um, iconoclasm? However, uh, Jonathan Fleck, head of the relevant department of the Livelihood Committee, categorically denies his guilt. He claims that the repainting took place without his knowledge, and he does not know who did it. The head of the committee, Comrade Kipler, supports his, her employee, drawing attention to the impeccable characteristics and lack of motive for such an act. Because of this, the decision was made to delay the launch of the official investigation. The party instructs you to deal with the incident without spending too much time and resource. Don't spend too much time and resources, but decide this man's fate. One cannot simply pull off a joke like this without being noticed. We need to ask the witness and everything will be clear. We need to properly search the trucks. Maybe we can find some clues. To those who did this, uh, we'll probably do so again. We shall watch the vehicle fleet of the Livelihood Committee. Hmm. So we can either ask the witnesses. We can search the trucks for clues. Or we can monitor the situation. I think if we ask the witnesses, they're going to tell us what what they think we want them, or what they think we want to hear, which would probably lead to bad a bad result. I don't know that we're going to find anything in the trucks with clues. I don't know what to make of it. Um, but we could watch the vehicle fleet of the committee. Looks like we have multiple agents that we can assign to given missions. So we've got Andre... Uh, Brasalish, uh, 54 years old. If we click the I here. Uh, he's Janapes, uh, a short man with a mild form of obesity, has a slight lisp, assigned to Iron One upon graduation, divorced, did not serve in the People's Militia, has been a member of the party since 1969. Andre met Comrade Lebowski during his studies when Lebowski was appointed to Iron One. Andre formally took a position. So this was like Andre's right hand man, which I don't know if I really want to trust him. Um, you know, he's obviously the fixer, but why would he be loyal to me if I'm replacing his former former head? Uh, meanwhile, we've got other people. We've got Abed uh, Alicia, a 32-year-old, um, born in Iron One to a family of migrant specialists, medium height, has short, dark, and curly hair, brown eyes, blah, 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 blah. I don't care about any of that. There are records of minor clashes with the superiors and conflict situations. He's inclined to show rigorism and moral intransigence fond of military history, reads popular science books, smokes, but does not drink alcohol. Okay. So these are these are my secretary's friends, I guess. Benevolent tyranny? I, I would guess my goal, my sister's brother, is to stay in power and not get killed. But we're not far enough along for me really to know what that goal is yet. We're the mayor of a, of a late communist uh, industrial town, so... I don't get the sense my I'm corrupt. I don't get the sense I'm trying to enrich myself. Catherine Hirsch, it says that she's good at getting people to like her. So that might be a good person to spy. This guy's more of a of a bruiser. He kind of fights with a lot of people. So this guy's like an electrical. So I think to me it's the choice between either Overton, who's more of like a um, someone who tinkers with electronics, or Catherine Hirsch, who is more personable and maybe would be able to get people to to talk to her. So I think we'll assign Catherine Hirsch. In that case, she might be better to ask the witnesses because people like her. And it won't be like the government's coming down hard. It'll just be like, she'll be like, hey, what happened? So let's do that, actually. So we'll send her and see what she can, what she can tell us. Is that everything for the day? 
So September 13th is completed. We spent $5,000. We gained 10% of party loyalty or what? I still don't know what this flag icon represents, but apparently we didn't gain any positive in the, in the different districts. The miners district looks like it's where we need to be worried. They're only at 30. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for our first look of an upcoming game uh, for the people being developed by Bresk Studio and published by 101 XP. It's a really interesting looking game. It's sort of a late Soviet era country and sort of our um, ability presumably to kind of hold at least our industrial town together uh, in what I imagine is going to be increasing levels of crisis and uh, challenge. So I think it's a really cool looking game. I will say I don't know how much more of it we will do in a streaming format. So I streamed for about 90 minutes. This was my very first look at the game. I had played around a little bit to look at some of the early mechanics, but I hadn't played through more than like two turns uh, in my initial playthroughs. So this is very much intended as just a what does the game look like if you if you pick it up and play it and what's your experience look like? That being said, I don't know if that'll suit this kind of a game all that well. Uh, I, I will show the second part of the live stream, but if you guys are interested, I think what I will end up doing is I will end up continuing to play the game and recording the gameplay, but chopping it up a little bit, because there's a lot of text and things to read in this game, which I don't think is super interesting for you to sit and wait for 45 seconds as I read through a blurb before I kind of process and think through it. I think this is a game that requires a little bit more cerebral approach and a little bit of a slower paced playthrough, so I probably won't live stream any more of it on my Twitch channel, but I'll continue to post it here on the YouTube channel. That being said, I hope you guys did enjoy my very first look at this game. Uh, again, it's it's almost like elements of Papers, Please, elements of uh, We the we the Revolution. Um, there's, there's a lot of interesting little bits in this game that I really want to dig into, and frankly, it'd probably be even more interesting if I knew more, more detailed Soviet history other than the top-level 30,000-foot view stuff. But uh, that's enough of me rambling. Let me know your guys' thoughts below. I really want to hear what you guys think about this uh, and what you want to see from this series going forward. But until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.